Here we are behind the 800 gallon aquarium. We're gonna start with this first pump, which is a, our return pump. We use three of the same pumps on this tank. They're all wave two, one half, horsepower, one half horsepower pumps by W Lim Corp. You'll notice I have a two inch ball valve on the inlet of the pump. Above it, I have a check valve to prevent water from draining down from the tank into the sumps in the event of a power, power failure. And I have a ball valve above that. The purpose of these two ball valves on the pumps is that I can shut them off if I need to switch out the pump or isolate it to work on it. Now, you'll also see on the back of this aquarium, we have two Schedule 80 two-inch bulkheads. And these connect first to two-inch ball valves, again, so we have ability to shut the lines off if we need to, because mind you, there's hundreds of gallons of water on the other side of these valves. And they connect into one two-inch pipe which becomes the inlet of our first closed loop pump. Now here we are behind the left side of the aquarium. You'll see we have a snapper dart hybrid pump and it has a two inch intake line, inlet line. We have a two inch ball valve in that line and a union. And above the pump on the outlet, we have an inch and a half ball valve and a union. These ball valves allow us to isolate the pump if we need to remove it or replace it. Uh, shut off the flow of water, easily remove the pump, and repair it or put, replace it. Now as it, this inch and a half outlet line comes up, we tee off of it with a one inch line, and we have a one inch ball valve which feeds the inlet of our JBJ Commercial Series Chiller. This is a one and a half horsepower JBJ Commercial Series Chiller, and we use this to cool the aquarium. The outlet line of the chiller is also one inch and that returns back into the sump and just creates a little bit of flow within the sump. Now as the outlet of the snapper dart continues upward, it's inch and a half line, it flows into the UV through a flow switch. This flow switch will actually shut off the bulb of the UV sterilizer to prevent it from overheating if the pump was to shut off. This can prevent the unit from actually melting down because the 200 watt bulb encased in a closed area it does get very hot. Normally with water flowing through it, it stays cool because the water helps to keep it cool. Now, on the other end of the UV, it's an outlet of an inch and a half, and we convert that into a spray bar into three three-quarter inch lines, which are plumbed through the side of the sump. Uh, one of those lines feeds a meaty reactor. The other two just empty into the sump, and they're basically spares. But those lines have three quarter inch gate valves on them. And those gate valves allow us to finally adjust the flow feeding the media reactor and any other reactors we may add in the future. Now here you see one of our three Oceans Motions units that we use on our 800 gallon tank. They all have a two inch inlet. So the water from the pump pumps into the bottom of the unit. And then they have four one and a half inch outlets. Ocean's Motions have a device, a drum, which turns inside them that alternates the flow between two of four inch and a half return lines. And you see on all of our return lines, we have ball valves on them, inch and a half ball valves. This allows us to adjust the flow of a specific return line so we can get the flow within the aquarium just exactly the way we like it. We'll come around the front side of the aquarium and look at the lighting of this aquarium. On this side, you'll see we have a total of seven 400 watt metal halide bulbs. We use a radium 20K halides. And here along the top of the aquarium, you can see the return lines, how they're plumbed in through the top bracing of the aquarium. The outlets of the ocean's motions are inch and a half. So we have inch and a half pipes coming through inch and a half bulkheads. And then down below those bulkheads on the inside of the aquarium, we have inch and a half Omniflex return nozzles. These Omniflex return nozzles allow us to direct the flow of the return lines to create changing flow within the reef aquarium. In the corner of the aquarium, you'll see the inside view of our overflow box. We have a total of three overflow boxes on the tank. One of them has two two-inch returns or drains at the bottom of it. The other ones each have a single two-inch drain. It gives us, again, a total of four two-inch drain lines on this aquarium. And we're pumping with the return pump about 8,500 gallons an hour from the sump through the aquarium. 
and all of the return lines and closed loop lines are connected through the Ocean's Motions Wave Makers. So again, we're getting constantly changing current throughout the aquarium. Only six of 12 returns are on at any given time. They're constantly turning on and off, creating changing flow throughout the tank. Now, as you look in the middle of the canopy, you'll see we have our last metal halide. And then on the right side of the aquarium, we have 11 Radeon LEDs made by Ecotech Marine. We've had these Radeon LEDs over this aquarium for over two years now. We've been very happy with them. They're given great coloration and growth in the corals and uh, definitely a lot nicer to work under the LEDs than it is the halides because they don't run at 400 degrees. All right, here you see one of the four two inch closed loop intakes on the inside of the aquarium. This is what you see. This is one of them here above the rose anemone. And that's a drain screen on there to help prevent fish from being sucked into it. But so that connects through the bulkhead to the two inch line, connects via a T to the other uh, two inch line in the back of the aquarium and that it serves as the inlet pipe for one of our closed loop pumps. So that particular closed loop intake probably has around 4,000 gallons an hour being drawn into it. Now we're gonna uh, cut and show you a couple of the other closed loop intakes we disguised a little bit better. We actually uh, screwed a two inch elbow into the bulkhead and then put our drain screen on the bottom of that elbow I used the bandsaw to cut small slices of live rock and I used zap gel or IC gel to glue those small pieces of live rock over top of the PVC pipe because obviously I didn't want to see that ugly white PVC pipe in the aquarium. And now we've let some corals grow into it, mounted a coral on top of it and it blends into the reef beautifully. we we'll take one more look at the one last one we disguise over on this left side of the aquarium here now. Now here you see another one of the closed loop intakes that we disguised, again using a PVC elbow, gluing small pieces of live rock to that elbow, and then we took and mounted a few corals on top of it. We mounted a pink lemonade acropora, an ultra blue tenuous. And if you look carefully between the strawberry shortcake and the aquamarine staghorn, you can see the drain screen just barely hiding back there. But that has 4,000 gallons an hour of flow moving into it and again creating flow through that section of the aquarium. Well, there you go guys. We've gone through all the different filtration components of this aquarium, showing you the piping, some of the plumbing parts, and where we put them to help isolate pumps and alternate flow. And hopefully now you have a better idea of how this aquarium actually works. I want to give a special thanks to Ryan Forshaw for all his awesome work in creating a 3D model of this aquarium. Certainly, I think the 3D model will give all the viewers uh, a better view of exactly how these pieces of this aquarium fit together and how it all works. So, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.